Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to start by thanking you once again for joining the Body of Christ Christian Ministries on Day Star Church Campus. As we endeavor to explore the Word of God through principles um, to enrich not only your lives, but enrich my life too, because as we go through this process, uh, every Thursday, God is ministering to me just like he's ministering to you. So thank you for joining and exploring with me the word and for joining me by listening to this message. By the way, if you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to leave them. You'll find the messages are oftentimes posted to Facebook. Uh, there's a YouTube page. Uh, so there is ways to, to get to listen to the message, to get this word, and then also the ability to comment. And I have no problem responding to comments. It helps keep me accountable for the things that I'm teaching and keep me on top of my game. Sometimes I may have to go back and look and study just to make sure uh, that things are line upon line and precept upon precept, but that's my heart. Um, but when I teach, I let the Lord lead me uh, in the topic uh, that we're going to talk about. And uh, I, I wish to make it interactive, but of course, you're not joining me here. There are some people here, but you're not joining me here, so you can't interact with me. Uh, but I, I like for it to be kind of interactive or at least to make you think. Um, so uh, I just wanted to once again thank you for joining me. I don't take it for granted. You could be doing anything in this time, uh, but you chose to listen to this message. I pray that you listen to it completely, um, and I pray that it blesses you. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you and praise you. I thank you for your revelation word. I thank you for your knowledge. I thank you for your insight. I thank you for the gift to teach your word, to understand it, to make it simple and plain so that people that hear the word can utilize it in their everyday lives, hopefully to change their lives for the better. Hopefully my lifestyle, Father, demonstrates your character so that as people see me and hear the word, they're inspired to change and believe that they can be better than they were before. Father, I just thank you and praise you for just being here. I ask that you think through my mind, that you speak through my mouth, that those things that would be considered mysteries, you make clear. I yield myself to you and I thank you in advance, giving you all the honor, praise and glory. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. So today, uh, I'm not feeling too well. Uh, that's just the natural state. I know Jesus is the healer. Uh, I know sometimes we're attacked with affliction and I was thinking about it. I had every excuse in the world not to come tonight and not to minister God's word. And I started thinking, I said, well, what would happen if I didn't show up? And I started thinking about there's probably somebody's life who is not going to be changed because today I chose to give up and to stay at home. And to lick my wounds because I wasn't feeling well. Now, I don't necessarily suggest that anybody do this, but when you're operating on purpose, there's something that drives you that's just beyond how you feel and what you think. And it really allowed me to know that it's not in my strength, it's not in my might, it's not in my wisdom that I do what I do, but it's through Christ and my relationship with God that all of this takes place. So if you hear me call for sneeze or something like that, I'm to letting you know that's the reason why. And hopefully it doesn't diminish the recording. But I was thinking about it and I said, what do we give up when we don't feel well? We, a lot of times we give up on coming to church because we're not feeling well. And because we're not feeling well, we use that as an excuse. There's always something to prevent us from being where we need to be, to receive what we need to receive that will get us to the breakthrough that we need to get through. And so 
I, I, I thought about the word praise and I said, what is praise for? There are many scriptures that talk about praise. And I was I was kind of looking through the Bible. I, I just wanted to see what was said the first time praise was mentioned. So it's actually in Genesis, the 29th chapter, the 35th verse. And I'm going to read the scripture to you because I just want you to hear because, you know, they talk about there's power in the first mention of anything. And so I thought about when was the first time the word praise was used in the Bible? So here is the scripture that was used. Chapter 25, verse 35. And it says, and he removed the day, and he removed that day, and he goats. That were ring shackled and spotted, and all the she goats that were speckled and spotted, and every one that had some white in it, and all the brown among the sheep, he gave them to his son's hand. Hold on, that's not the scripture I'm looking for. So I always keep a couple of resources handy. I was reading that. I was like, that don't sound like the scripture that I read earlier today. So I'm going to read it. Let's see. Oh, it is 29.35. Where did I go to? I was in 30.35. That's why I needed to turn the page. So let me read the scripture. And it says, and she conceived again. And bear a son, and she said, Now will I praise the Lord before. Therefore, she called his name Judah and left bearing. So, the first time the word praise was used, it was used by a woman named Leah. Leah was married to a man. And the man did not really appreciate her simply because he was tricked into marrying her. The man's name was Jacob. So Jacob made a deal with Laban, her father, to marry her, his daughter, Rebecca, and so he worked seven years, and the seven years that he worked and toiled, he worked and toiled to marry Rebecca. Well, on the wedding night, as the story goes, instead of Rebecca being in the marriage chamber, it was the older sister, and the older sister was Leah. Now, Leah, according to accounts, was not a beautiful woman, and she was older. And so the explanation that Jacob was given was, it would be sinful for me to give my younger daughter to you without my older daughter being married first. So labor for me seven more years, and I will give you Rebecca. Can you imagine working 14 years, being willing to work 14 years, just so you can marry someone? You would probably care about or adore that person a lot. And if you were tricked into marrying someone else, you probably would have some resentment 
for the person that you were tricked into marrying because that was not your choice. And so the relationship between Leah and Jacob was not a relationship that was inspired by love. It was a relationship that was based on obligation. Now, the story takes a little twist. He got Rebecca, which was the one that he wanted. But in the process of getting Rebecca, Rebecca was barren and did not bear him any children. So back in those days, the greatest honor that a woman can give a man is a son. I'm just trying to put this in context for you. The greatest honor that a woman can give a man is a son because a son is the legacy to everything that you have accomplished and everything that you're going to leave as an inheritance. The son carries your name. That means when you have a son, your name lives on. There was great significance to bearing a son. And Leah bore Jacob a son. Rebecca, his choice, was barren and could not bear him a son. So as we go through the story, basically, Leah because she knew she wasn't the chosen one, was praising God because she knew by bearing him a son, that meant significance. And basically she was praising God that Jacob would love her now because she bore him a son. It's kind of interesting when you think about it. She wanted to be married and was not chosen to be married. Her sister was chosen to be married before her. When she was married, she didn't get to choose who she, who she married. The person chose her, or in this case, was thrust upon her. Marriage back in those days was not a ceremony. If you slept with a woman, that consummated the fact that you were married. Wasn't a preacher, wasn't a pastor, or all of those things. It was the fact that you and the parents agreed that you two could join together and then they allowed you and the daughter to enter into intercourse to consummate and validate the fact that you were together as one. Don't want to get off track. So now Leah is married and I can only imagine a woman on her wedding night, she knew what was going on. Jacob didn't know what was going on. She knew what was going on. She was excited. She was happy because she knew her validation was going to come if she bore him a son. And she did. As a matter of fact, she bore him three sons. But the first time the word praise was used in the Bible was in reference to someone giving gratitude to God for his favor for allowing her to bear her husband who did not love her a son in the hopes that it would make her husband love her more or love her at all. I'm going to come back to this and preach this a different way another time. But the word praise was used because someone appreciated and reverenced God for a blessing that he gave her. Praise was used to show reverence to God for a blessing that was received by the person from God. We talk about in the church that we were made to worship God, the angels worship God and praise God. They spend all their time doing it. And I still ask the question, what is praise for? 
Because I don't think we understand. I think we think that praise is when we turn on music. The kind that we like to hear. The kind that makes us feel a certain kind of way. And that could be good or bad because I think there's a lot of people praising R&B music. There's a lot of people out there praising rap music. There's a lot of people praising old time Christian music and country music and every other genre of music that's out there. Because it makes them feel a certain way. And so they reference the music because the music puts them in a particular mood that they're looking for. And so now it's like self-medication. If I want to enter into praise and worship, I have to hear this certain song and I have to hear this particular person sing or the choir got to be on point this Sunday. Or I got to find my praise and worship list and put it on. We're self-medicating. We haven't found a reason to reverence God for the blessings that he's given us already, which should cause us to want to praise him. If you didn't know God has already done something for you, that's the problem. You look at your current situation and think, I will praise him after he does this or after he does that. As if he has not done anything for you already. John 3.16 makes it clear. It says, God so loved the world that he gave the world something. He gave the world his only son. Not only did he give the world his only son, his son gave the world a promise that after he left, that he was going to give us something called the Holy Spirit. And he didn't say that you were going to get the Holy Spirit at a certain point. He said the Holy Spirit will be here for you. To teach you, to guide you, to nurture you, to help you, to give you wisdom and knowledge and understanding, to assist you on your walk in life. And hopefully that walk, that walk in life is a walk with Christ. Hopefully. So. People that don't worship God don't know that he already did something for them. He gave his only begotten son. That might not be a big deal for you, but I have a son. And I'm going to tell you like this. If I had my son do anything for you that was a sacrifice for him, I would have an attitude if you treated him without respect or reverence for what he did. Because I sent him on assignment for you. I would have a problem and an attitude. If I sent any, my daughter, if I sent my daughter on assignment to help you and you disrespected her after I allowed her to help you, I would have a problem. And that's not a religious thing. That's a natural thing. So, if God gave us his only son without any reservation or stipulations, he gave it now to obtain the promises that the, that the son, his son, came to fulfill. There's something that you have to do, but his son is for you, whether you've accepted him or not. Because he was a gift. If you don't choose to get the gift, that's your loss. Because the son was a gift to everybody. He gave his son to the world. If you choose to believe, that's on you. If you choose not to believe, that's on you. But he's still a gift for you.
Praise is so difficult because we don't think about what God has done for us. We're waiting on God to do something for us now, and we're waiting and begging. And I heard a wise Christian say, while we are waiting on God, God is waiting on us. And when, when it was first said to me, I was like, well, what is he waiting on me to do? And then we come up with all of these great theories like, well, he probably told you what to do. You just don't know what to do. So you got to think back or ask him to bring it to your rem remembrance so you can do that so that it'll unlock the blessing so that you can get the next thing that you're supposed to get. We make it like a formula. You know what I realized? <laughs> he told us to praise him. So while we're asking God for something and we're on our knees and we're praying a petition prayer. Saying, God, please deliver me from this situation or God, I need this rent money or God, I need this situation to turn around for my benefit. God, I need this or that. While we're doing that, we're missing the point and don't understand why. It seems like God hasn't tuned in to us. Ladies and gentlemen, you know why God hasn't tuned in? Because he's listening for something. Something happened to me. And I decided that when I pray, I'm not going to ask God for a whole bunch of stuff when I pray. I'm not going to ask him for a whole bunch of stuff because that's what everybody does. I decided when I pray, I'm going to thank him for what he already has done. The blessings that he's already bestowed on us. The things that he's already granted us. And after I thank him and make sure I give him all the credit. Then I pray for other people. I don't pray for me. I pray for other people first. At the end, I might say something about myself. Most of the time, I try not to. Because if he doesn't do another thing for me, he's already done enough. Something shifted. Things that I had been working on for years started to break through when I started to do the things that God called me to do and he told me to do that I didn't know how to do. Things started to happen when I started to stop asking him for stuff and things and just started to praise him for what it is that he's already done. Something shifted, something happened. Promotions happen. Things turned around. That doesn't mean that everything is all good all the time. But every time something happens, I don't say, oh, God, you got to deliver me. No, I say, all right, this is just another trial or test that I'm going through. God has already prepared a path for me. He's already given me a purpose. This thing would stop me from doing what he called me to do. So I'm not even going to worry about it. It's not even worth me praying about it. It can't stick around if I stay on task doing what it is that he called me to do. It has to move out of the way. He has to take it. I don't have to tell him to take it. it he already knows that. And I keep on pressing. And I keep on striving. What is praise all about? Praise is acknowledgement. It's reverence, it's respect. It is selfless and not selfish. Praise will cause you to step out of yourself and out of your current state of circumstances and focus on someone else other than yourself. Most of the time it's God. Some of us need a little help getting there. So sometimes it's the music and then the music takes us to God. But the ultimate thought 
when you enter into praise is to give him reverence for what he's done. I'm not going to give you a list of things that the Bible says that he's done. Then you'll think that there's a formula. And if I do this and if I do that and if I do this in this certain particular way, it'll no. Talk to him. Talk to him like a friend. Like he's someone that can relate to you because he can. Tell him your frustrations. Tell him your challenges. But when you do all of that, don't forget to give him his due. Don't forget to thank him for the air that you're breathing. The activities of your limbs. The ability to impact somebody's life in a positive way. The ability even to take care of yourself, however good or not so good that you're taking care of yourself at this moment. Thank him for your purpose. Because he created you for something special. Thank him for just being who he is. Thank him for his sacrifice. If you spend time thinking about those things, thanking him for those things, all of a sudden things will start to move out of your way. It's almost like you got his attention. Praise is like a doorbell to God. When he hears it, he listens attentively. Worship is the same way. It's like a doorbell to God. It's like knocking on his door or sending him a text message or an Instagram directly to his phone or electronic device if he had one. It's like an IM message that goes straight to him. And he knows exactly what to do when he gets it. He listens. For those of you who don't think God can hear you, Ask yourself, what have I been saying? Have I just been complaining? Have I just been asking? Have I been asking over and over and over and over again for the same thing? Have I asked only for myself and nothing that would be beneficial to him? Have I asked him, what should my next step be? Not, I want a PlayStation 3. I want a new car. I want a new house. I want a fresh pair of shoes. I want a promotion at my job. I want, I want to, is the only thing that I'm talking to him about is what I want. How about we say, Lord, I want you to show me what my purpose is. I want you to show me how to better use the gifts that you've given me. I want to show, I want you to show me what I should do next. Cause I have some ideas, but I have no direction. God, just show me me. Help me be a better me today. Just help me be a better me. Nothing for anybody else. Just help me be a better me so that when I walk out in the world, they see you. Instead of the person that I think I am based on what I see in the mirror. Folks, it's time out for being religious. It's about a relationship. And some of us don't even know how to be in a relationship, no matter how bad we want to be. To be in a relationship, you need to find the right person because that person needs grace for you. And you need grace for them because everything is not always going to work out as prescribed. It's not going to be ideal all the time. Because we're imperfect people. But if you talk to God about who you are. And you have him continue to work on you. Your attitude will be better. You'll be a better mate to that person. And maybe your lifestyle and the light that you show. Will start to reflect on them. And they'll start looking at you different. 
They won't look at you based on your past mistakes. Maybe that light will start to shine on your future path. And they'll start to see where you're going and not where you've been. I have a couple of favorite songs. Praise is what I do is one of them. But I used to listen to it all the time and I used to get caught up in what the words said. And I wanted myself to be what the words said. Praise is what I do. No matter what I'm going through. I lift my hands to praise. Praise is who I am. I'll praise him while I can. I live to worship you. I vow to praise you through the good and the bad. I vow to praise you whether happy or sad. I vow to praise you even when I'm going through. Because praise is what I do. And when I felt like I was falling short, I would run and get that song and play it. So that it could tell me who I was supposed to be. Instead of being who I was supposed to be. I didn't need the song. All I needed to do was praise him. I heard the song thousands of times. I know the lyrics. All I had to do was do what the lyrics said instead of just listening to what the lyrics said, hoping for some comfort. And that's where we fall short. We hear these great praise and worship songs and we say the words. But they stop as they come out of our mouth impacting us. It's only a blanket that we put on for a little while. And after the blanket has served its purpose, after we've warmed up, what do we do? We sit it to the side and move on as if we've never needed it. Praise is not a blanket. Praise is who you are. Praise is what you do when you reverence the Lord. When you remember that you didn't have to wake up breathing today. When you realize he didn't have to allow you to have a son or daughter. When you realize he didn't have to give you a promotion. When you realize how terrible your life has seemed up to this point when you start to judge yourself. Which, by the way, you never should do. But when you start to evaluate who you are and think about how bad you are. You need to reverence God because he doesn't look at you or see you that way. He sees you based on what he's made. It's interesting. We can get up and preach and do all of these great things and get people to tell us how things have affect, uh, affected them and impacted them. And we get energy from that. When what we should get energy from is our relationship with him. So what are you going to do? Are you going to continue to look at praise the way that you did before? Do you have to find your favorite playlist and your favorite song to put you in the mood? Sometimes you just got to decide to change your mood on your own. Stop self-medicating. Because sometimes if you medicate too much, it starts to lose its impact. My prayer for you is simple. That you start seeking more a relationship. That's why Matthew 6.33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. When you're seeking the kingdom of God, that means you know he's a king. You know what he's done and what he's promised. 
and you reverence him for that. And then he said all of these things in the kingdom, the king provides everything for all of his subjects that they need. All of these things will be added to you. Folks, we need to spend more time praising God, seeking him out, acknowledging who he is. Acknowledging that he gave his son and he left us the Holy Spirit and relying on them to help guide us. If we'll do that, I know God will hear everything that we have to say. If I came to you every day complaining about something, would you want to hear me? Probably not. But if you came and gave me a compliment all the time when you were struggling and you had something on your mind that you needed to talk about, I would probably listen twice as hard. Invest in your relationship with him. Stop treating him as a pimp. Can't pimp God. We try because we beg him for everything. Stop treating him like that. Let's talk to him about what he's done in our lives. Let's start to seek a relationship with him. Let's start to change who we are. One of my other favorite scriptures, it says, I don't know about you, but as for me and my house, we're going to worship the Lord. It says our body is a temple to the most high God. That means it's like a house. It's constructed. This is the place that we praise him first. As for me and my house, my body we're going to worship the Lord and then my household will see me worship God and then my household will start to worship the Lord. And then when people see my household worship the Lord, when they come over, they'll get into that attitude and, and, and start worshiping the Lord with us as well. And then we go different places and when we're on our job and people are struggling, guess what? They'll come to you and you'll be able to lead them into worship. And to praise God for who he is. And then they'll start to worship him. We need to have an attitude of worship. Praise him. Acknowledge him. And he'll be a blessing to your life. Hope this message was a blessing to you. This is Pastor D.C. Elliott, Body of Christ Christian Ministries on Daystar Church Campus. Bless you.